I'm Deborah Cassidy, and I have a story of a glass artist to share with you. This is the story of Paul Stankard, who is a glass artist, and he declares that the plant kingdom is his personal foundation and mystical starting point for his artistic journey. From a boy rambling in the woods of North Attleboro, Massachusetts, to a renowned glass artist, Paul Stankard's unique artistic path has been guided by his love of nature and by his imagination and determination. Stankard enriches contemporary glass art with his flame work botanical pieces. He amplifies our view of botanical art. His work is in the Boston Museum of Fine Arts, in the Metropolitan, in the Louvre, and in 60 museums around the world. He says, as an artist who interprets nature and glass from a botanical view, I strive to accurately reproduce the delicate beauty of flowers, yet it is equally important to me to create a work of art that is enjoyed by others and appreciated. I hope to bring a sort of immortality to one of Earth's most fragile and mortal wonders. This is Paul Stankard at his torch. He uses glass and the heat of a propane oxygen torch to create his pieces. But since most people do not know um, about this process, I have a little video here that you can watch and uh, understand a little bit more about his process. The maker begins with material preparation. Here he's overlaying powdered transparent green over opaque green to enhance the authentic color of the stem. Now the maker is encasing opaque white glass with clear glass. The clear glass supports the illusion of negative space. Once completed, it is reheated and pulled into a smaller diameter rod used to create petals and florets for the flower. Once the components are completed, the maker crafts them into a delicate flower. All right. It's interesting how the work is a combination of, of components and steps. And we start off very basic and just building blocks. Add, keep adding, adding. You did a beautiful job on that, Kathy. Think we can uh, capture it on the flower? Looks good. I think it looks really good. Oh, hold that's it! Good. I think that's, that's perfect. Good. Great, yeah. you know, a little, uh, a little spontaneity. It worked. All right, let me seal it on the blossom. And I enjoy uh, incorporating a lot of detail into the glass, and that detail nurtures a sense of credibility. 
I think people look at my work and, how did you get that flower in the glass? Let's do it. Okay. Oh, wow. Look at the honeybee in relationship to the beetle. Unbelievable. All right. Let's Glass is a mysterious material. And the idea that I'm suspending a design in the center of crystal is wonderfully challenging. OK, Dave, whenever you're ready, heat it up. All right. When I first started making paperweights, I quickly decided I was going to focus on the nature of my childhood. Beautiful, beautiful. I can remember getting all excited. The furnace, for what it's worth, is called the glory hole. Out of it comes a true make or break moment. A paperweight at last. It goes into an oven to rest. Nice. Hey! <laughs> we did it! But why does he use glass in making his art? Well, glass actually is a medium with several characteristics that are very good for glass. In the first place, his pieces are three-dimensional, and you can look at them from any direction at all, even the top or the bottom. In addition, in their crystal matrix, these plants can be affected by light different ways at different times. The entire piece can shed a beautiful shadow. The glass can double or modify the image of the plant that he has encased in the glass. Looking through the smooth side of this piece, the plant looks as if it's growing above ground. But looking through the rippled side of the glass, perhaps the plant is growing in water. So it's just changed by the angle in which you look at the, at the piece. The fragile glass elements in this piece are encased in transparent crystal that protects the delicate components from breaking. These flowers will never fade. Glass is one of the most durable of materials, bringing therefore a measure of immortality to these beautiful flowers. Why glass? Another question. Why no one else was making botanical pieces in glass? Well, there's a practical reason as well. Paul had uh, chosen a career in scientific glass blowing after years of struggle in school where he was suffering from or coping with undiagnosed dyslexia in the 1940s and 50s. They didn't recognize this. So um, this seemed to be a, a wise career choice. But when he was faced with a, a prospect of being thrown out of the program, he forced himself to really learn to read enough so that he could conquer the, the material that was presented to him. And he managed to graduate in 1963. And he followed this career of scientific glass blowing. He was fascinated by the, the uh, technical uh, challenges that it presented. And in the 10 years that he pursued this, he became quite a uh, quite a, uh, an accomplished glass blower, but he was uh, frustrated by the lack of artistic uh, challenge. Therefore, he jumped into the world of art and he began to try and develop techniques with his flame working to create representations of plants. He had, as a um, youth in North Attleboro, he had been enjoying the, the uh, flowers in the woods. And then as a youth, he moved down to New Jersey, and he still was uh, fascinated by the plants. So that he was trying to uh, create a language in his glass to show these botanical pieces. His early works were relatively simple because he had to invent the, the techniques himself to translate his love of the botanical world into the glass. 
And in this one, you notice the little bee pollinator he has already in this piece. And as he moved along, he felt he had to challenge himself in order to think and to build on the best traditions while searching for new ways to infuse myth and beauty into his work. Well, Stankard had to educate himself. Uh, he refused to be defined by his lack of formal education, and so he um, himself, he educated himself by listening to audiobooks, by listening to music, learning about classical music, Baroque music, visiting museums, and talking with other artists. He challenged himself to take creative risks, and all the while he was devising a visual language to express the beauty and sanity that he found in the natural world. In 1972, Stankard took a momentous step and he left his scientific glass blowing career and he focused on his art. The artist identifies three primary uh, factors in this, his own success in looking for his own lyrical voice. The first is the poet Walt Whitman. Whitman has been a deep source of inspiration for him. Like Whitman, Stankard believes that the primary sanity of nature can touch the soul. And like Whitman, Stankard seeks to elevate the ordinary to the extraordinary. The second uh, factor that brought Stankard into botanical, uh, making botanical pieces, is something that we as botanical artists can be very sympathetic with, and that is his love of the Harvard glass flowers. And um, as we all know, they were created um, by the Blaschka brothers, and who worked also in flame work like Stanker does. And there are 4,000 botanically correct uh, flowers and plants in that teaching collection. But from the beginning, Stanker's um, goal was different. He didn't, he, he respects the botanical integrity of a, of a plant, but he, his idea of exact accuracy in his work for botanical accuracy has evolved as he's moved on. Stankard says now that his work relates to the total of life cycle, sex, death, and rebirth. The third factor that Stankard cites as a, um, one of his primary influences is the Millville Rose. It is a beautiful small paperweight with a very stylized rose which has been placed in a transparent globe. As a youth, Paul had moved to Salem County in New Jersey where there was a thriving glass industry and where he studied the scientific glass blowing. In the early years of the 20th century, some of the craftspeople there had developed this Millville Rose paperweight, and they didn't use the, the same technique that Stanker did. They used a crimp or a tool to put the colored glass into the paperweight. So it's different than Stanker's, but it was an inspiration for using a botanical subject. So with Whitman and the Harvard glass flowers and the Millville Rose um, prominent in Stanker's artistic growth, uh, there is more, however, because his mature work shows a lot more uh, than that, and it really depends on the self-education that I mentioned before. Many of his mature pieces have little root people down in the bottom and around in the roots, and these are really reminiscent of medieval herbals. And as you can see in this visual, there are two small people in the corners uh, entwined with plants, rather in the manner that we just saw with the previous slide. Also, you wonder if medieval manuscripts are an influence because of the gold that are, um, is found in a lot of manuscripts and the botanical pieces in the manuscripts. In his later pieces, he calls some of them diptychs and triptychs, which are words referring to uh, altarpieces. And it, as in this diptych, there is the cycle of life. There are the buds, there are the flowers, there are the pollinators, 
and they're little berries and they're the root people but also there's a large um, globe a golden globe that's floating in a very ephemeral way in the diptych and this triptych has uh, the same situation where you have small botanicals that have been gathered together in a very impressive larger piece of glass and again the great golden globe that is suspended above all. Sometimes a stankard puts um, just crams a small globe with many many flowers and berries and 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 pollinators all in one small globe. In an abstract way the artist says I think of my work as sex, death, and God. To me that means spirituality. That means the life cycle of nature. Like the Benedictine monks, my labor is my prayer. There is a spiritual dimension to my work. The tight buds and open blossoms in this sphere, uh, the pollinators and the filling of the honeycomb for the next generation demonstrate this idea of the cycle of life in his work. In some of his later pieces, he has uh, other elements, the root people, masks. In this one, there is a mask, uh, the gold and silver orbs, bees, dragonflies, insects, and small words appear in various of his works. Here, blossoms spring to life from one of these golden orbs. And lastly, I'm showing you one of his very large six-inch orbs and it has again teeming with life. It's, it has blossoms and it has uh, berries of the fruit, has a whole swarm of pollinators and uh, the honeycomb which is being filled with, with food for the next generation. Again the whole cycle of life. And uh, Paul Stankard, this generous and prolific glass artist, continues to follow his passion, inspired by his lifelong love of the botanical world. Thank you very much.